Well, today, uh, Trina, it uh, wasn't quite as uh, busy as it normally is. Well, we had some interesting uh, discussions in the workshop beforehand. Uh, and look, if yeah. people have time, go Come on. on. No, right. well, go on and have a look at the whole meeting because really today um, there was a lot of discussion around a lot of issues, including some of the issues that we're experiencing at the moment with our with the vandalism across the, the whole scope of Snowy Valleys Council. We're having issues at our amenities, at many of our playgrounds and equipment. And it's just a really sad... Reflection. Sad it yeah. is, because, yeah. you know, we pay for this, or each well, of no, the ratepayers no, the community, pay for I was this. just going yeah. to say, what we ne really need to understand is these, these amenities don't belong to the council, they belong to the ratepayers, you know? Everybody who, who lives in our communities, they, you know, they own these facilities and it's sad to see, you know, uh, vandalism take place. But, you know, there's, there's also another message here is the fact that, you know, when you've got nothing to do, right, or you see no purpose in, in you know, any other activity, you know, well, what do you do? You vandalise things, and that's well. Sad. We just need to engage that's a, right, a wider range of people and get them involved with. That's things. right, yeah, and give them some ownership of some of this stuff. Yeah. Now, talking of ownership, the code of meeting practice today, <coughs> we actually looked at that, and um, predominantly around the areas of our public forums, because the public forum is the opportunity where members of the community can come and address councillors and have a say. Yeah. Yep. Mm, no, not not necessarily on on an issue that actually affects you, but some issues that might affect the wider community that you've got a view on. It's an opportunity to get your message or your view across to the council. So Yeah, but it has to be on in relation to a report that's in that yeah, business that's right. paper for the day. But the changes that we're proposing, and it is going out for public exhibition, so if you're interested, have well, a look. But it's about bringing the public forum as part of the meeting itself, but also that we will be recording the, that public forum and the presentation so that people can go in and see what, what those people... What the issues are within exactly. the community and how people see it. It's, yeah, well, there were a number, a couple of other things that, and I know I'm moving around here, but there were a couple of other things that are out for, uh, for consideration. The, uh, the draft payment of expenses to councillors and, uh, and the mayor and uh, also the uh, media and social media uh, package yeah. so you know they're policies that the community needs to be aware of you got to look I think that people will often say oh how come councillors get this or don't you get isn't that what your money is for paid for I think if you go in and you actually have a look at the policy that relates to the payments and and also the facilities that that elected provide, representatives yeah. yeah it just gives you an opportunity to understand and um, people, people also need to realise that there's not a great deal of money involved with, with being in, with involved in, in local government, but it's such an important role that we play and it's far too important for it to be purely based on volunteers or who can afford to do the role. And that's where you have democracy and you have the diversity of old people and then younger people. Not, that's I'm right. not younger, no. Sam's younger. Them, I'm not. And look, the other thing is too that you know when you look at the amount of time that if you want to do the job properly exactly. and, and well, the amount of time that you've got to put in, not only just in, in the day-to-day -day activities, but reading the reports, getting an understanding of what's being discussed or what's being proposed, yeah. having a good understanding of the financial management of the organisation. Uh, and look, that that's an area where... Uh, We've it's, got a biggie. An, it's a big. <laughs> it's a big. Look, biggie. if you, we can't manage the money, it doesn't matter about the rest. And and the biggest problem has been getting a handle on exactly what the financial position is in, within the organisation. I think we're r really starting to get on top of it now, and it's it's good to see that there's a, a really a committed group that are managing our finances. So, look, hopefully, uh, we'll be in a better position sometime in the future but it won't be for lack of trying let's put it that way now talking about trying we do actually today one of the things that we did is, is we set the council meeting dates for the next 12 months and um, just to note that it was voted that council did not hold a meeting in january that's not to say that there, there won't be one. there won't be one because 
we have many issues that we're working on in relation to um, the proposed deamalgamation, the S SRV, SRV yeah. the budget. So we have many, many things that we need to be looking at. So while it may not necessarily be a formal meeting of council, or if needed, it will be, a, be form. a formal we meeting. We can call an extraordinary meeting. Yeah. Um, but it it is from December the fifteenth, which is the last council meeting this year. This is the closure over Christmas. No, yeah. no, no, no. Oh, sorry. This is us. As, this is oh, our right. council yeah, meeting. Yeah, so right. the last one. And in December and the next one. December fifteen and then February fifteen will be the so next one. That's right. Now the closure, closure is something different. That's right. Yeah. That's, that's about right. the staff, and that's from the twenty second of December through to the eighth of, of January. January. Yeah. So there'll be, uh, uh, you know, uh, emergency staff here and people to handle any issues that emerge during that period of time. But basically, the council's day-to-day -day operations will be uh, curtailed between the twenty-second yeah. of December and, and yeah. recommencing on the eighth of January. And so I think it's important for <coughs> the community to understand too that it's not that the staff are given this it's time it's off. That's of actually holidays. part of their annual leave with the <coughs> exception of the public holidays Most like everybody else. Course, that's right. So, you know, please don't feel that, that we just let the staff wander at off. You, yeah, at your, <laughs> at your expense. Um, no, so it's, it's part of, it's yeah. taken out of their public uh, holiday or their yeah. holiday pay yeah. and uh, the public holidays, obviously Christmas Day and Boxing Day, yeah. New Year's Day are uh, uh, public holidays for everybody. Yeah. So. Now the media and social media policy that has gone out today again for public exhibition is it's bringing, bringing Snow Valley's council up to best practice and you know... We've combined two previous yeah. policies together and you know... 20 years ago there was no social media similar, policy. That's right, that's right. So yeah. times are, are certainly moving on and at a rapid pace too I might add. I know. Uh, you only have to, to look at the emerging technologies that are happening. We had a report on the, uh, the uh, state uh, communication strategy today too which highlighted the, uh, the penetration of new media mechanism, or not media, new communication mm -hmm. mechanism within Snowy Valley's council. A number of sites are being activated and a number of the existing sites upgraded. But one of the things we hammered home was the fact that there's got to be backup power provided, like you know, we only have to go back to the 2019-25s to see when communication failed miserably by virtue of the power supplies being impacted. But uh, look, one of the other issues, and it's primary concern coming towards the swimming pool. Have season. we got a deal for you? That's right. Anybody <laughs> who's, who's got the necessary skills, interested in a job, pool manager, Batlow. At Batlow. Mm. And we're looking at, you know, sort of from three to six, for most days, and then on weekends, oh, six to six, six till to, uh, no, twelve, 12 to till six. six that's got right. It back the front. So you know, it's it's a, an ideal opportunity during the school holidays, particularly. But you know, we we need. I think our pool season's roughly three months, so we're looking mm -hmm. for a, a pool manager at Batlow. So if anybody's it's, uh, it's interested really or knows somebody who yeah. could be, it's an opportunity. It is really mm. really important, and and one of the things is that you know if if we don't get that person this year, then the opportunity to open Batlow Pool becomes more and more difficult. So we need people out in the wider community to look at the opportunities of becoming either a pool manager and, and pool. even lifeguards. That's right, look, and, and it's an opportunity to develop a new skill. Uh, and, and look, I don't know, you know, people help, have of, often have opportunities like university students or... Yeah. You or and I can't do no, it. No, mate, I'm, well, I, I'm flat out floating, let alone swimming. So, uh, you know, it's... Uh, but we can't, yeah. No, it, it's just an opportunity. And look, you show me a skilled person in life, I won't show you someone who's burdened down. It's an opportunity to yeah. pick up an extra skill in life, which, you know, could well stand you in good stead in the future. So, coming up to the next couple of months, um, this council has a lot of work to do. We have some really important decisions to make some important documents that we need to go through and, and look well, at as well. We have two meetings left for right. 2023. The D merge is certainly an issue, uh, you know, how we progress that and in light of the, the state government's new uh, template for D merger, we've got to spend a significant amount of time uh, considering how we go about that. Uh, uh, I think you made comment earlier about the uh, the fact of the budget situation and the SRV, so 
and we'll be holding pop-ups uh, later this month in, in all our communities. So uh, I imagine they'll be advertised in the local press. So if you've got an opportunity to make yourself available, um, I'm sure there'll be councillors mm. and staff at all these pop-ups to discuss yeah. any issues that you have. Please engage with us. Yeah, definitely. We, we are nine people who sit around the table, but we don't have all the knowledge. We're as good as the information that's, that's fed right. to us and, and what we can research ourselves. And so. how much we listen to our community yep. and take on board their feedback. So, you know, please please talk to us about the concerns that you have in a, in a broader sense. and. You know, we're open uh, to suggestions and, right. and ideas. And but if you want a if you want a new career path, tool manager at Batlow Tools looking pretty good. That's right. <laughs> and look, you know, that's another thing that we discussed is about traineeships, cadetships uh, within the organisation because we as a nation need to train more skilled and professional people and and counsel uh, in itself as part mm. of that solution. And uh, the other thing, just to throw in. Well, it's not to throw in the country university. We're uh, progressing that as uh, as rapidly as we can. There's an opportunity for there funding, is. so you know it's uh, another opportunity to provide education opportunities for our kids, and and not only our kids, but you know mature, mature age, age students, students as well. Yeah. So. And that's the thing with country university is that it's available to anyone, and the number of the number of universities that participate in the scheme. Gives, gives many, many people, opportunities. it does, yes, right, right. and so it's for people of all ages and I know that when we, when we had a look at the one in Cooma, there are even young mums who are doing university degrees because it gives them the opportunity, the opportunity to do that it. flexibility. Yep, yep, to do it when agree. somebody else can have the kids at night when they're in bed. So yep, it's, a, it's a brilliant opportunity, um, we are determined to make it happen this time, absolutely determined. Well I believe it's been discussed yes. for many, many years here yeah. but there is a certain uh, will and commitment to make it happen. Yeah. So, very good. I think that sums there it is. up. We've probably digressed a bit, but Steve did okay today. That's right. Yeah, it was great. He's he's brought a, a new perspective, a, a, a local government perspective and in rural or I, New I South Wales. I don't think we can finish up without at least acknowledging. Oh, the man the, with the bow tie. The man with the bow tie today, ah. Glenn McGrath. Thank you for making a smile. You know. Life, life needs more people right, who can yeah. brighten up a room. And uh, when Glenn walked in with, <laughs> with his, his bow tie, tie yeah. it, it made everyone. There were a smile. number of descriptions, but you know, I probably won't go down that yeah. path. But he, he did well. He, he added a little bit of uh, flavour to the day. So, yeah. thank you. Life right doesn't up. have to be that serious. Yeah, that's right. Don't take ourselves too seriously. Yeah.